it's quite common that you'll have multiple controls on your UI that you want to have share the same control callback. A good example of this is if you're creating some radio buttons. There is a built-in radio button system, but if you need to create your own because you've got a script stuff, you'll have like three or four buttons. And rather than writing an individual callback for each one, you can have them all share the same callback. So I thought I'd just give you a quick example of how I do that and what I think is the best method for doing this kind of thing. So we'll just add three buttons to the UI. Let's zoom that in a bit. So this is our first button. We'll call it BTN Radio Zero. And we'll turn off saving preset for this. And I'll press Control D to duplicate that. And because we called it BTN Radio Zero, the next one's automatically been named BTN Radio One, which is what we want. And I'll duplicate that one, just pressing Control D to duplicate, and one last time. So we've got four buttons, and they're all named from zero to three. So I recommend you name your controls like this. Um, it makes it easier when dealing with them in groups. Okay, the next thing to do is to get references for each of these components and put them into an array. And there are a couple of ways we can do that. I'm gonna show you two ways now. Let's just make a bit more room here, actually. So in the component list, we're just going to click on the first one, hold shift, click on the last one, right click and select create script variable definition and because we've got multiple selected it's going to prompt us to give this a name so we're going to call it btn radio so that it matches the name of our components then we'll click ok and now if i come over here i can just paste and it pastes an array containing a reference to each of these components another way to do this is to use a loop to get the component references and that's what we're going to do here because we're going to need a loop anyway so we might as well use one loop for two jobs so right, const btn radio equals an empty array. And we'll create a loop. This is just a for loop. For i equals zero. i is less than four because we've got four buttons. i plus plus. So this loop is basically going to count from zero to three because we've got the less than symbol there. So one less than four is three. So we'll do btn radio dot push. So push add something to the end of an array. So we're just going to add things to the end of our btn radio array. Content dot get component btn radio plus i. So i is the index from zero to three. Okay, so now we're going to create a callback. So inline function on btn radio control. So we're saying on, that tells us that this is a callback function. We're saying btn radio because that's the name we're using for our buttons. And control tells us it's a control callback. So we have a load of information in just the name of this function so that anybody looking at this will know straight away what it does. And we don't need to put a comment or anything like that. It's self-documenting. So it's a good sort of naming convention. And this is the naming system that Heiz uses by default if you were to just use the auto-generated control callbacks. Then it needs two parameters, component and value. And now we need to assign this callback to each of the controls. Now, rather than doing it one at a time, we can just do it inside our loop. So we'll say btn radio i dot set control callback. And then we give it the name of the callback function on btn radio control and a semicolon on the end, hit F5 on that. So now all of these buttons are sharing this one callback. So we can test that, we can do a little hello world, console.print, hello world. And now if I click any of these buttons, it's going to print hello world. So now all of these buttons are sharing one callback. So this is the sort of basic thing I wanted to get across in this video. This is how you get all your controls to share a callback. So now let's see how we can figure out which of these buttons triggered the callback, because currently we have no way of knowing if it was the first button or the last button or any of the buttons in between that actually triggered the callback. All we know is that one of the buttons triggered it. So I'll show you how we do that. So the parameter here, component, refers to the button that actually triggered the callback. So if we print out the components ID,
we'll actually see which button triggered it. So we see BTN radio zero, one, two, three. So that's one way if you just want to find out directly which control triggered the callback. But usually you don't want to do that because usually you want to be able to reference the control inside your array and the array can only be accessed through indexes. So we need a number. We need to know if it was button zero, one, two, or three. We need to know which index. And again, we can use the component parameter to do that. So we can create a variable. We'll call it index. And this is going to be the index of the button inside the BTN radio array. So it's going to equal BTN radio dot index of component. So index of is a function that you can use with arrays. And if we go to the API documentation, we can see it. Ah, there it is, index of. And what this function does is it will take the thing you put in the parentheses and look for it inside the array, so btn radio. And if it's there, it will give you the index. So in our case, 0, 1, 2, or 3, of where that component appears inside this array. So we'll print that out, console.print index. So when I click the first button, it should be zero. When I click the second, it'll be one. Third, it'll be two. And fourth, it'll be three. So that works nicely. Okay, so just to sort of round this out so you get something sort of practical as well, I'll show you how we can actually turn these into radio buttons. So first of all, we just want to respond when the value of the button is one. We only want to respond when the click action actually turns the button on. If we're turning a button off, we don't want it to do anything. If we're turning it on, we want it to turn off all the others. So we use if value, and that's basically the same as if value equals one, or in other words, if the button is turned on by the click action. And then we're going to loop through all the buttons And we'll do btn radio dot length i plus plus. So this is basically the same loop we've got here, but instead of putting four, which is a sort of arbitrary number, we're actually using the number of elements in the btn radio array. And the reason we're doing that is if we put four here, and then at a later point we add another button, we'd then have to update this to five and this to five, which is the kind of thing that might get forgotten, and you'll end up with um, errors that you've got to fix. Whereas doing it this way, we only ever have to update the number of buttons here, and this will always be correct. So the way this is going to work, if i, so we're looping through all the buttons, and if i is the same as index, then we don't want to do anything because it means that button has been turned on. But if i does not equal index, so i is a button that wasn't clicked, then we want to turn all those buttons off. So we can do that with a simple if statement. If i does not equal index btn radio i dot set value zero. We'll hit F5 on that. And now we have our own radio button. So as we can see, the radio buttons work here. If we click the button that's active, it will turn off. Now, if you don't want that, if you want it so one button always has to be on, then we just need to make a slight modification. We can remove this if value thing. I'll just comment it out so it's still here for you to see as a reference. And then we add an else to our if statement. So this means if i is the index. And do set value one. And now when we click one that's already on, it's not going to turn off. Another way to do that is to take this completely outside of the for loop and just put it here, change i to index and hit F5. So again, the one that's clicked will always be on. So that's how you can assign one callback to multiple controls. And I use this kind of thing all the time. It's really useful and really easy to do. And this index of function comes in handy all the time. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below the video. If you like this video and you would like to see more like it, please click the subscribe button or join me on Patreon. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time.